Today is gonna be a short day for us, hopefully. We weren't quite able to finish the drainage last night, so I've got a little bit of work to do on that. Looks pretty good over here. So we got all the cloth and the gravel on this side. The back is done, north side, and we stopped over here where the wheelbarrow was no longer necessary. So I need to use the backhoe and drop a little gravel in here. And we conveniently had the dump truck put a pile of gravel here as well as over there. So that should be a pretty straightforward task. And then we can put our second layer of filter fabric down. And that portion of this project is done. That'll kind of free us up. We've got some friends who are camping this weekend and Alyssa and I, I mean, it doesn't even, it's not even worth mentioning, but we're insanely overdue for a little bit of R&R. &R. And uh, we really like these people a lot. So we like to hang out with them. We didn't uh, finish the filter fabric out to the end of the footing here because we've got a small drain that actually penetrates underneath the footing. And that's to help drain the inside. We won't be putting the inside drainage in until we're done pouring the walls. It'll go along the footings here, but our, our bracing for the ICFs will need to sit on the ground there. So if we were to put that in now, they would conflict with each other. In between each major phase of this project is quite a bit of research. Sometimes when we get started on a piece or a project, we end up getting bottlenecked or I call it minutia. You can't finish that stage because you're stuck trying to find details. And part of this does come down to not having all of the data available at our fingertips when we start. And so these are lessons that I'm learning as we go. So before we start a phase, I find myself sitting here in the shade, taking a little bit of time to look over the project and, and really try to think through what the problems could be or make sure that I have all the tools, the materials, the data, you know, there's nothing we're missing. I find that this really helps these phases go more smoothly. When you kind of jump in and just start going, which we've done a little bit of that, um, like with the membrane, we were delusioned into thinking we could just jump in. Well. We ended up backtracking by like three or four days before we decided to move forward. So I'm going to sit down and look over the plans, look over my notes, and kind of think about where we are with the ICF portion and make sure there's nothing here that I'm overlooking or forgetting. Um, something that I've been wanting to research is the strapping on the common seams. So we've got a common seam, I think right there, which means we've actually cut both block and there's no tongue and groove. Uh, it might be down one more block. <clears throat> those seams need to be reinforced before the pour because there's no tongue and groove to hold them from blowing out. 
uh, I need to make sure that if those need to be braced inside and out, that we have access to the back walls so that we can put that bracing in place. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if we got the walls completely erect and <laughs> couldn't brace them? And the whole time during the pour, you're just sitting there going, God, I hope that doesn't blow apart. One of the things that we've learned with this project is that it's not necessarily the steps that are involved, it's the order or sequence of steps. So what I'm processing right now is how to get the uh, zuckles, excuse me, the zonts, these braces attached to the ICFs. I think that instead of trying to stack the ICF and then install the zont, it may be easier to install the zont on the ground and then stack the ICF because the instructions say to thread or poke a hole in the side of the ICF and wrap either a zip tie or 16 gauge wire around the in wall bracing and around the cross ties inside the wall. And that's what you secure the vertical braces to the ICF with. This Zont and Zuckles bracing system is a little different than the vertical bracing systems that a lot of companies typically use. So we kind of have to invent or somewhat figure out a way for this to work for us. So I'm kind of just processing this and thinking of a way to make it easier because if we try to attach this cam lock onto the wall, once the ICF is on, you're going to need a ladder and to climb up onto the top of the block and reach in to make the wire contact. This is one of those order or sequence of events things that I think if we do it right, won't be too bad. And if we do it wrong, it'll end up being a tremendous amount of work. So after thinking about it for a minute, I realized that the wall basically has to be assembled before you can even start installing these braces. According to the instructions, we need to wrap, poke a wire through the wall, wrap it around this in-wall bracing and these cross ties, and I'm gonna assume the rebar too, because that's what's you know a part of the structure of the wall. Poke it back through the wall and have these kind of pigtails sticking out. We'll put our brace across here and then wire tie that to the wall, which means we can both push and pull on the wall. You're not supposed to pull. That's not what you want to do. At, at the worst, you want to push, but that's according to the instructions. The reality is if your wall's bowed out, you're going to have to find a way to bring it back to true. So I'm realizing that while I'd love to install these cam locks on the ground and then attach the block, the wire tie portion um, going through here is going to have to be done after the rebar is in and after the in-wall bracing is in. And of course that all can't be done until the wall is built. Alyssa tells me that the video for you folks is about uploaded, which means we are free to go. I did get one more row of ICF on there, but I ran into <clears throat> quite a few problems. There's areas of the footing where the footing, like on the step down, is off by maybe eighth of an inch. And the net result 
is you get the blocks trying to compete for who gets to go up. I've learned that with the ICFs, each course has to be perfect before you move on to the next course, or you can't go back and fix it. You, you'd have to literally disassemble the entire row, work on the row that's broken till it's fixed, and then move on. I took quite a bit of time to try to figure out why these blocks are off an eighth, which is maddening because the blocks were off by an eighth per block, and now it's struggling because of an eighth of an inch on our footings. And I suppose this is just par for the course. So I'm gonna be taking it a little slower from now on with these upper rows of block because those small inconsistencies are going to begin to magnify the higher we go, as those blocks are gonna to wanna to separate like this. So it's gonna take some patience to make sure they all fit. On a positive note, it did occur to me that the pieces of block that we're trimming for either the corners or the common row, those pieces can be reused as other pieces common rows. I know that seems brutally obvious now that I say it, but it takes a little creativity to make them work. But the good news is we don't have any wasted block now. No scraps left over. So hopefully we can continue that trend. And uh, I actually need to do an inventory at this stage of the project. We're at a very specific stopping point. So I need to take inventory and make sure that we do have sufficient materials to finish the job. Lightform did make sure we had a few extra blocks, but, and we haven't made any miscuts. We've made a couple of cuts that we weren't happy about, but we decided to just move those to the top of the wall. So they're still okay, but maybe they're not ideal for the bottom two rows. So we're gonna save that block and we'll just use it toward the top of the wall. Anyway, today was a highly successful day. It's time to go stick our toes in the creek. We'll see you tomorrow.